Today we are checking out a micro civilization. This is a clicker civilization builder strategy game. I've never quite played anything like it. Uh, this is kind of like combining cookie clicker with a civ building game and you get, well, this. I did receive a key, so thanks to the dev for that. I've been playing, well, I had intended last night to play for like 15 minutes, but I clocked seven hours already. Uh, I've heard a couple of issues with it being a little bit repetitive, but overall I think it's a pretty fun game. Uh, it could be fun on a laptop. Uh, kind of like, not really mobile gaming, but uh, there there are like ascensions so that you go through different phases of civilization as you go. I think it's more easily seen than explained. So let's just begin. Here is my current game where we are up to the industrial age. Uh, or that is, we can make it up to the industrial age in the game. So here's the basic concept. We have a civilization in front of us. Uh, or what will become one, but it is empty right now because no one lives here. Uh, so we need to go through the ages of the game. We've researched foraging. That is literally the only thing that exists so far. Uh, and now we've just researched a wood hut, uh, which is amazing, obviously. Oh, we could also build Stonehenge. I think I will begin with a couple of huts and then we will probably build Stonehenge shortly thereafter. Um... Mm, okay, so good. So my people are beginning to get to work. And the more I click... Hang on a second. Which, actually, you don't have to click. I, I recently learned that you can press A and S in order to activate these two buttons here because these are pretty much the only buttons that you press for the entire game. We're going to have some serious carpal tunnel by the end of this. And we might even wind ourselves up in the hospital if we play well enough. Um, so that is really going to be the goal here is to, is to get some sort of injury from playing the game. But yeah, if we create enough huts... Now, we don't want to create too many huts, otherwise there is the risk of unoccupied huts, which, well, we all know what that leads to. And if you haven't been filled in yet, well, it could cause fires to spread. Basically, we have the free space in our civilization, and we have some amount of food. Uh, we want to keep this growing at a pretty steady rate, because if we don't have enough houses... Uh, then vagrants will start to roam across the land, raising malcontent in our civilization. I just want to go ahead and we'll start building a spearman right here. You really have to be occupied, otherwise you can really screw yourself over. Uh, and things can go from bad to worse in an instant in this game. It, it is very easy to mess up, but I, I have figured out most of the strategy. We're going to keep on researching technologies as we go through here. So we have huts. Uh... We have 68 free spaces, though, so I think it's okay if we take some time away. We're going to research, uh, or we're going to build Stonehenge. I had to unlock this through an ascension. We get uh, more, like, victory points per tech, so that is kind of cool, actually. Um, other than that, we do have some resources that are giving us passive stuff. So I don't have to actually click every single time I do this, because I do have a flow of stone. Where is that flow coming from? Well, normally we don't have any, but I've unlocked several leaders. Normally we'd start off with nothing in the game. Uh, but I've made the game a little bit easier by ascending. Uh, I, I like it because you can say ascend a lot. And any game where you can ascend is my kind of game. Now, that's not all you can do. So you're growing with your population. As your population grows, you get more workers who raise even more food and help sustain more of the population. Uh, we will start, or we will continue unlocking milestones. This is obviously our research. Uh, we have quite a lot of technology to get through here to get to the end of the industrial era. So there is quite a lot to go here. Every time that we ascend through an era, though, uh, there is combat, which right now we're going to go ahead and start. We've got one spearman, so I think it's safe to go ahead and do this now. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and start exploring beyond our lands. Uh, we want to convert, I think, converting this to farmland... Eh, honestly, a village would probably be better, so it behooves us to make a village there. That's going to give us more workers as time goes on. At the same time, we're also going to convert this tile into a forest by hunting down the woolly mammoths over there. Uh, so this is very, like, civilization sort of appropriate matter to be engaging with here. You know, civilization kind of stuff. Also, MDK414 and Cytrom. Thank you very much for the subs. Appreciate you guys. Missed you guys back. It's been a while. I haven't streamed. Uh, I'm sorry about that. The holidays were kind of crazy. Uh, I went home for Christmas for family. And and to experience cold weather and 
also the drink a lot in my hometown, but mostly the latter. And honestly, it was a terrible time, and I had too much to drink, and I, I wouldn't do it again. I regret what my decisions. So I, I'm glad that the holidays are over, and I won't be coming back anytime soon. But that's about it. Hope you guys had a good Christmas. Uh, oh, hang on a second. We're running out of space again. Okay, so here we have done the wrong thing. You see that the vagrants are starting to pile up. So we've got a social crisis on our hand. We may have let that go a little bit too far. I'm actually just gonna... Ooh, I kind of messed up here. I should not have let that happen. Um, we're going to lose a little bit of our tech right here just for a second because... I didn't see this crisis coming. Okay, and then I will use my spearmen to take out the barbarians. So you can see- oh god, I didn't ex I didn't prepare for the woolly mammoths that would be coming afterwards. Whoops. Okay, so let's use a spearmen on them. What you can have in this game is sort of like a horrible death spiral that can occur. Whoops, I accidentally didn't have enough houses right there. That would have been bad as well. Now it can get out of hand very quickly. Uh, so we need to kind of keep up with things, and I'm going to- I'm already getting a lot of carpal tunnel. I'm very satisfied with this, the way things are going. Uh, hopefully I'll have a trip to the hospital on my hands by the time that we're done with this. But we can- so, you know, we've got 108 people we've got to accept. Let's use our bonus wood to make a lot of huts. Free up some space for our population. And here we go, now that we've got 97, 104, 99, 106. We need, I think, 300 for the next worker slot. So 317, we're gonna take in those people and we're out of free space again. So our civilization is growing super fast. Uh, I really don't even have time to get spearmen ready here. Uh, just because our civilization is growing so fast that there's hardly any time to do anything other than, like, build huts here. Which is, honestly, maybe a bit problematic because there are a lot more interesting things we could be doing. Other things, so we've got some resource flows in. These are mainly due to our leaders right now. Uh, and you probably saw me pushing a bunch of buttons in order to control our military. The military game in this... Uh, honestly, I think is a little bit too easily gamed. Like, at first I really struggled understanding it, but then once I did... Like, every conflict is a little bit too formulaic now, I think. Um, so it would be nice to get a little bit more variety on that end, but, you know, it is what it is. So let's go ahead and spend a little bit of this extra wood we're getting from our lumber mill, which we've got going over here, uh, to buy a dry storage. Dry storage is going to be good just for slightly slowing down our growth, you know. We've got people disposed onto the lumber mill that's upping our wood production. I actually want to take away from some of this fast food production because if you let your civilization grow too fast, you can start to get like uprisings and fires and other issues like that. So there's quite a lot that can go wrong. Um, hey, my name's Cat. Thanks very much for the prime and arson or whatever. Arson or whatever. Thank you very much for the subs. Yeah, basically, like, if you don't have Carpal Tunnel by the end of this, you're in trouble. You're you're playing wrong. So, like, this... I'm surprised I don't already have it, although I am a little bit worried because I've been playing for about eight hours. <laughs> I, I am. I am worried. Send help. Um, oh, we have to make a fort before this is done. Okay, cool. And we have enough for four of these things, so that's huge. Now, there are other ways that you can kind of, like, automate the clicking as you go through the game. There are certain leaders that will literally push these buttons for you, which is quite nice. Uh, I don't currently have any of them unlocked. I actually like the other leaders I've got right now because they give us a lot of resources. So we've had, like, a copious amount of resources since we began. We also get, you can see that the buttons start to burn as I press a lot. So the more you press, you do create click heat which raises the chance of, I believe, a fire, but also I think it can lead to a social crisis as well. Um, it's ironic, like, you, you start to try to just keep up with this, and it gets... I mean, it's inevitably going to become horribly out of hand, is what I've been trying to say. I'm trying to keep the population growing slowly right now, actually. Uh, I haven't touched the feed the population button at all. 
So now we've got more mammoths coming. Uh, I really don't like to let them come in at all. I think it would be cool to show them. Although, they would literally kill my population and destroy our homes. Which can send you horribly into a death spiral where your civilization... Eh, excuse me, your civilization keeps self-destructing. Which is kind of funny to postulate and, like, philosophy about. But I, it's more just frustrating than anything else. Like, I... Like, I ran to the bathroom. You know, like, when you quit the game and you go, Ah, like, I hate this. Uh, it was very frustrating. Uh, in order to defecate in frustration and anger. Anyway, that was my original experience of the game. And, uh, like, irreplaceable though it was, it was a learning experience. You know what I mean? Like, when you take an angry... You know, like, you defecate angrily. Am I the only one who... I can't be the only one, right? Anyway, uh, we'll leave that one behind us. Keyboard bindings for the button. So there are A and S. Actually, which one is faster? Ironically, if I click and hit the keyboard binding at once, I go even faster. Now, it does make me enjoy the slow uh, move toward carpal tunnel. Uh, right now, we've actually got down to negative wheat per second. So this is good. We are at now at a comfortable moment. We have good free space. We can spend money on a windmill. Uh, now the windmill is going to cause insane food growth to arise after that. So just want to position ourselves properly before this begins. We also have more food available. We could create like some sort of food boon if we want at will. Although it would be nice to get a quarry. As you can see, we've been unlocking little buildings as we go. So we had a, a granary, uh, which allows us to... Well, it raises the soldier capacity. Basically, that brings our spearmen count from one up to four. Various leaders can also influence these numbers as well. It's actually okay to have a slight outflow because population is just going to remain right around there. If we had too many empty houses, that would be a fire risk. So far, we haven't had this, though. Hang on a second. Uh, we've got mammoths again. I'm going to double my military power just because those look like tough mammoths. Uh, no, we will want that reward. Oh, ah, I did not mean to do that. Rick says, is it early access? Indeed, it is early access. It's, uh... When I last saw... There's, like, more than... Well, obviously, uh, definitionally. Definitionally. Definitionally, yeah, early access, so perhaps more will be added. Although, I I'm not, I don't think I can actually show you what will be added from this screen. There were, like, more levels beyond the last ascension where it said, Coming soon, you know, in that kind of, like, cheeky, oh, I haven't finished this yet kind of way. Um, although I do feel as though there is enough game here in order to get an idea of what will be. All right, so I'm going to start using A and S in order to click on these buttons because my uh, right hand is starting to get tired. You're going to get a lot of that in this game, I think. I think the other thing that is just a little bit repetitive is having to complete a quest like four times in order to unlock the region. So we've been using missionaries in order to try to get more people to move to our village. Um, currently, we have a 36% chance of uprising. Hang on a second. Okay, so we want to make sure that our military is fully maxed out. And I'm going to wait a minute until these missions are done before I research Division of Labor. Because Division of Labor is going to set us into a crisis. The Neolithic Revolution. Uh, which is actually a literal revolution in this. Uh, and is not to be trifled with. Nothing to trifle with there. But, um, yeah, that's about... Okay, so here we've got more barbarians again. I'm just going to use the fist in this. Again, I didn't even let them in. Maybe I should just because I'm showing off the game. Perhaps the next one I will, but only once I get, like, fortresses so that we don't get totally screwed. I'm going to double up our, on our power with the, uh, what is this building again? The windmill. Uh, and then take another wood bonus. This is going to give us a marketplace. Marketplace is great because we can, ooh, uh... All right, um, I will just let them kill some people right here so that you can see. 
1,020, so they're going to destroy a bunch of stuff. Ooh, no, they might actually destroy the granary. Okay, I've let them kill 43 people. For the sake of showing off the game. For the sake of showing off the game is why I did it, of course. Not because I thought it would look cool. Um, but yeah, we just finished a couple more quests that gives us more wood inflow and more workers. So, quite a lot to be had there. Send missionary quest has been completed. We haven't claimed these uh, missionary people yet. Although, although now we can start to make gold. So as we go through, we start to get more and more of these... Like, I really can't grow this fast right now because... Look, this is as fast as I can possibly make huts for my population. Uh, so I might just need to spend some time, like, growing my population with these huts right here. Um, more archers. Yeah, I don't even have the wood bonus, so we're just going to have to do this before we get to the next fight. After that, it is kind of nice because now we have a whole new villager who's making more food or a new worker. Plus, we have more wood inflow from our outer outposts. See, one and two. Uh, there are a lot more of these that we can do. Oh, yeah, right there. There are a lot more of these that we can do, but it's... Uh, it's it's a bit of a grind to get up through that point. We'll get to the classical era next, but I just want to make sure that we have four out of four archers and maybe a little bit more combat ability here. Let me just go ahead and reactivate this thing. What is that again? The, like, encampment. Yeah. I always think of it as, like, the rook. I feel kind of bad for having gotten good at the combat. I have in missed this. the past few streams. I'm sorry for always entertaining to watch live. Also, Indignant Possum, Clinical Happiness, and uh, hey, Ranazu, what's up? Thanks very much for the subs. I mean, yeah, like, is it kind of canonically obligated that we have woolly mammoths in the game? I could let a fire break out, you know, just build up a lot of. Wouldn't that be kind of funny? Uh huh. -huh. Wouldn't it be so funny if there were a fire? Wouldn't that just be so funny? I think I will build one hill fort here. I'm going to let some of this happen. Oh, actually, we do have four spaces for hill forts. Hill forts are useful because when the events happen later on, remember how they killed like 40 people? So the invaders don't actually have to get all the way to the very end in order for them to destroy your civilization. They could just kill, like, thousands of people and you would lose the game. So I've had fights where they haven't even gotten down to the very end and, like, we still lost anyway, which is rather depressing. Uh, so I didn't really want that to happen. I think we are ready to do division... Yeah, excuse me, division of labor now, which introduces taxation. Uh, cool. Okay, so we're going to start taxing people now. I also have three fort units. And every time that I click one of these things, it's going to unlock for us some of the leaders in the system. I don't fully understand the system. I'm just going to go ahead and straight up say it because there's this very kind of confusing recipe system. Four common heroes of every of any color or shape. But if I put them in... Well, you know, let me... Now that I say that, can I put in four of the same? Which is what that seems to suggest to me. Like four of the same color. And yet, no, I can't do it. So I can't figure out how that system... Maybe you guys can help me figure out the leader system today. Because otherwise I've just taken heroes that I thought looked good. You know, high level. Um, and if you mouse over all of them, you can see their name. Like, we did get Marco Polo, Cleopatra, um, and then these other people uh, who don't matter as much. Uh, and... Yeah, I can't really figure that out. Although you can dismantle them like this, which adds to your components. So I've just been dismantling them. But honestly, because I just like the sound of it. So there is that. Um, oh yeah, possibly the same levels. There is that. Yeah, let me go double check. Four elite heroes of any color or shape. Uh, actually, I wonder if one, two, three, four. No, I have only three elites right here right now. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, I don't really know. Cool. All right, there we go. Hang on a second. Uh, yeah, bot begun. Why is there a bot? 
Be gone, bot. We don't want any more views. In fact, I have the opposite uh, goal of most people on Twitch. Get less views. I mean, fewer views. Yeah. How's that for being, um, you know, dissident and subversive? Yeah. Well, not really subversive, but just... Oh, no, I can't use it. Uh, the Neolithic Revolution, which was literally a revolution, of course. I'm gonna go ahead and place down one of these shield things, which means that once the invader gets closer to us, uh, they won't even cause any damage. See, look at how harmless this is. Three, two, one. Blocked by a hero. Oh, by a hero. Very nice. Uh, unfortunately, I do not actually have enough to take it out right now as is. So let's just go ahead and spend more wood on archers. This game really got the sounds right. Ooh, ooh, that's the stuff. I don't believe I'm actually going to need any more than this. We'll just get another fist. The fist recharges, excuse me, but uh, it does only a little bit of damage. Okay, so we have overcome the Neolithic Revolution. Cool, very cool. Okay, I'm, I'm glad that we streamed this because I simply did not see this. Uh, so apparently I was not looking at the hero's rarity closely enough, uh, or what was it? So elite leadership hero level 11. So we need to combine four elites. So similar borders. Uh, honestly, that would not have been totally intuitive to me. It would have been nice to see an example, but I am somewhat of an ignoramus. So I guess that's how it is. So we've now sorted out some of the recipe system. I think I get this a little bit better. We don't really have as much use for Marco Polo uh, right now. Yolanda Favela is our new hero who is actually enabling some autonomous construction, uh, which I am going to do, which is actually quite a nice thing to have around because it like, hang on a second, I'm just gonna turn off autonomy for a little while so that we can stack up some autonomy. Autonomy, autonomy is a nice resource to have because you could just have the AI, or not AI, sorry, the word AI gets overused nowadays and I don't like it. Um, is it the, compu the computer uh, can, you know, take over for you. So I can just hold this down and now the computer is going to create archers and stuff for me, which is kind of nice, but I would rather stack up some autonomy because it does use up autonomy by clicking. So we'll just let that kind of go to use now. So now we have started to accumulate new resources as the ticking of time progresses and advances. So the huts are continuing to be built which is raising our population, obviously. We need to keep exploring. So we have more workers, we have more wood, but what else could we use? So this would give us a fortress. I personally find fortresses somewhat useless, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, we could use a farmland. Farmland would not be bad. Quarry would be pretty good too. And this village, actually these are pretty easy quests, so I will start this one. And then at the same time, let's also go ahead and make a quarry because why not have a quarry? Why not get more stone, right? Stone is always a good thing, uh, hard and useful. We'll go ahead and create a hut there as well. So overall, I would say that this is mostly the game loop. Um, we've seen most of the resources, or some of them, that is to say, at least. Oh, now we can start to sell stone. We actually have too much space, so now you are starting to see that fire risk uh, appearing as we go. Now, I think I will go ahead and most probably the uh, yeast. No, no. I think wheat, yes. It would be good to have our population growing just at a slightly faster rate. Um, let me see. What else can we handle right now? Population growth. Uh, we aren't getting enough population. Now, I could spend a little bit of money on a barley shipment route. I don't really want to do that right now. Um, I think I'm going to slightly take off on our production just so that our population can keep growing. I will spend a little bit for that, and then I'm just going to go ahead and create a population boon through food just to prevent that fire risk from taking place. Now we do have another four archers. We're going to get another crisis at the end of this. Either a woolly mammoth or something will attack us. Let's go ahead and collect more of these. I may take a slightly closer look at the leaders, but I don't want to keep obsessing over the leaders because I feel like that the more... Well, I mean, to be fair, honestly, a lot of the game is to be had in leaders, but... 
they, it's kind of confusing how you're constantly getting new choices. And I think our situation is pretty good right now. Um, we have like advanced metal from Cleopatra and Claudette Sal. Uh, this also gives us slightly better combat, slightly better food, slightly better wood. We have a good balance of other resources going on here. So I don't really want to mess too much with what already seems to be working for us. Uh, although I think I will turn on uh, autonomy now. And it isn't actually going up or down. Uh, 50 per switch and 0.5 per second. So that does appear to be self-sustaining right now. So I don't really have to click on anything. I could, but I want to just kind of zoom out and see how things are going. So we do have a social crisis. So I'm going to use another combat bonus on this. We'll take a little bit more gold from that. What we're really trying to work toward, though, is the grain trade route. Uh, which costs 2,000, and that causes the inflow of food to occur for an hour. So that's what I'm really trying to save up for here as we go. Um, I might actually turn off the market in order to dispose another worker for a minute. So that we can get a little bit more of this wood and get the archer. Cool. Okay, now we fight the Celts. Uh, I guess I am going to use another combat bonus here. So we've continued our quests here. Uh, we do get the hateful club. The inhabitants of this village express latent hate and mildly racist remarks toward your hygiene standards and government policies. So they don't like us very much. Um, hmm. You know, free food for five minutes. It's pretty good. I'll take that over the archer, I think. Not bad, not bad. Also, Beanie Rabbit. Thank you very much for the sub. Appreciate you, Beanie Rabbit. Now, there are various things, like, you can declare war on a civilization, um, and then you get, like, another set of crises come your way from them. There's a good number of interactions in the wider world without. I think now we can actually just continue with those. I've pretty much just kept a, a point of it to, like, constantly be fighting, or constantly be going on missions. Uh, because by the time you get to the end of it, your, your civilization can be extremely productive. Like, it is very fun. Um, or I don't know maybe that like I guess engaging is a better term like I, fi I find that this game is an extremely good time waster and I feel as though I have some sort of product for all of my you know basically constipation at the end of a few hours of just well really developing massive carpal tunnel um, don't forget about that don't forget about that in the end. Uh, actually, the reason I got into this, like I said, is because I got recently into Cookie Clicker, which is pretty, a really un a horrible and unfortunate addiction that I have that I need to feel like I'm doing something all of the time. Hang on a second. Uh, nope, I don't want to do that. Ooh, I accidentally just let a lot of people die, didn't I? Oh, well. Oh, no, they just destroyed the... Ooh, that's not good. We need to repair the workshop. So that is an example of something that might go awry. You can have a social crisis which can destroy the entire civilization, in which case... Just trying to think if I should do that in order to demonstrate it to you. You know, I, I don't think I will destroy the entire civilization right now. But I could, keep it in mind. If, if I don't think people are behaving very well in this dream... I will turn this civilization around, mister, uh, and you'll regret that. Um, that For legal reasons, that's not a threat, but... Um, well, I... I, I uh, Segway. Uh, huh. Lumber mill. Wow, what an amazing lumber mill. Turn this stream around. All right, I'm not... We're moving on. We're moving on to different. Time. Nope, nope. We're moving. <laughs> Hostage situation. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How dare you? How dare you? Or maybe I'll do you what I did to the Celts. Um, that one also was. Uh, right now, I'm gonna walk out of this now. What are we researching? Whips. Uh, okay. Why do we need those for stone? This one technology, wait a minute, this one tech... Oh, I guess because they're, like, going to whip the people that have to get the stone. I thought they were, like, whipping the stone out of the ground. I was thinking, that doesn't seem like a very... 
like helpful solution, you know? Did I get that right? Is it Is that the reason why? Oh, did I say se I yeah, I believe it is Celts, right? Celtic, Celtic. Yeah, that is the heart is it what kind of sea is it? Have I played Age of Empires 2? Never heard of it. Of course I have. Um Yes. Actually, some of the music kind of reminds me of AoE now that you mention it. It's kind of like an AoE feel about it. I don't really know if I would go ahead and say that this is like similar to AoE. I don't think it it doesn't feel like AoE at all, aside from the fact that we're going up through the ages, you know? Although I'm kind of curious how the game will change when we get to the modern era. Like, we're getting to... We will get to the Industrial Revolution as we get to the end here. I'm going to build more abodes. Oh no, do not... For some reason, whenever you let the AI take over... AI... Um... It always seems to want to build up your military first. Which is fine, don't get me wrong. That's fine. But... Alternatives. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Captain Oss, this is how's life with an editor nowadays. It's it's kind of nice that I can like put my attention onto different projects. Actually, I'm working with two guys right now. Yeah, I really enjoy it. It's kind of nice having uh, two people because also too like you know everybody's got good days and bad days and stuff like that too. So it's kind of like uh, I don't know where it's more of like a team kind of thing. But yeah, I, I think I like working with multiple people. It, it just makes it more fun. Um, yep, I don't know. Yeah, and I can, like, switch, kind of, like, switch, uh, from project to project a little bit faster. I recommend it. I recommend it. Hang on a second. And the button is on fire now. Hot. Hot. I think we will continue with these abodes, because our, like... Um, oh, we should also start getting more gold again, too. Whoops, I turned off the market a little bit too long. I do like to keep the gold coming here, just because we don't have much else that we can do with the food. I like keeping the military ready to pounce on an attack, if it should ever arise. And as I take minor breaks from time to time in order to avoid and stave off the oncoming carpal tunnel that will eventually grip my hand. Uh, whoops, hang on a second. I do want a, a quarry. A quarry is a very useful thing to get. Alright, here we go. Let's chase down more of the woolly mammoths, or whatever it is. Uh, and we will go in for the last bit of archers here. Let's also go ahead and turn back on the lumber mill. Um, are we currently at the place where we can afford... No, we can't yet afford to... Yeah, we're just gonna have a bit of a shortage right here. I think that's okay. Um, yeah, we need just a little bit more production from this civilization. Either that or we need to establish some sort of grain route here. So we're going to have a little bit of a period of, like, drawing down, of dumbing down and everything. Um, I think when we're done with this, we should be able to get the market back. Or even if we take that out, okay, now we're on a slight uptick in food. It's kind of what we want to stay at, like a slight uptick. Not too fast growth. Too fast growth means that all you can think about constantly is the growth, and that gets kind of annoying. What are we here? Okay, so the game is actually recommending that I sell stone. I'm okay with that. That's actually pretty decent. Go ahead and collect that. Grab more rulers in the background. Yeah, I have occasionally swapped out to press A and S. That is true. You can do that as well. But then I get carpal tunnel in the other hand. Um, eh, I will take a granary, raise my granary level, that way we can store more soldiers in the granary. Of course, that's what the granary is for, for storing military combatants inside. Hey, Rain Man Games, thanks for the very kind words. Hope you're having a good night. 
I can't hold them. Oh, can I hold them? Oh, actually, you're right. Yeah, I can hold the button down. Wow, what a good idea that was. Wow, so I don't actually need to be constantly pressing. But I feel like that defeats the whole purpose of, you know, putting myself in pain. I was kind of enjoying that, actually. Why did you prevent me from experiencing massive pain and discomfort? How dare you? Oh no, a war. I will scare off the cannibals cannibal community center. Um, you know, I am willing to lose three archers for that right now, just so that we get the free houses too. Cause you know, at least we get something in return. That's kind of nice, right? Let's just quickly rebuild our archers. See, that's not so bad. We have good wood production in this civilization. Good wood production we have. Uh, I'm willing to research a wheel in order to raise the amount of wood that we are capable of fundraising. Wow, another 2024 game that looks like 94. K 19. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is true. There are a lot of modern games that... I feel like it's the kind of the retro nostalgia uh, aesthetic. A lot of the games that appeal to people nowadays, I feel like are hearkening to yesteryear. You know what I mean? It doesn't really matter because I, um, I'm just a fictional person on the internet and I'll go back into Reddit now. We. Um, let's go ahead and take those extra houses and then we will, ooh, I was unable to fill them? Really? I thought that those double harvests would have allowed me to do that. Never mind, we are experiencing massive fire risk right now, actually. Nothing funny about that. Uh, and I don't really want to lose the units. Okay, we are just slightly screwed right now. Um, there may be a fire in the next cup. Nope, there was no fire, never mind. What else can we do? Uh, let's get more pr productivity on the food part. We just, we're not really keeping up with our population that good. Now, gradually over time, we'll be, we'll become massively overproductive in these areas. Uh, I will finish off these two quests just because we need more production from without our borders. If we are to come much further as a civilization. Uh, I don't really want to let up on our military in case if some crisis breaks out. And I also don't want to waste the money on these kind of lower level... ...things. Um, hmm. The granary. Uh, that isn't really helping either. We are just in kind of an awkward position right here. Um... I could, you know what, I could do a little bit of a barley shipment right now just to kind of get us through this tough time. And then when we get out of it, life will improve. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, we'll take a short-term barley shipment right now. And you're not looking to adopt a man in his 30s. Oh no, I thought you said, am I a man in his 30s looking to be adopted? And that particular, do you mean like a renter or just someone... It'd be kind of like a niche way to market yourself if you were looking for an apartment. Hey, I'm looking for an apartment, but I'm not uh, going to pay you. I'm going to be adopted by you as a dependent on your taxes. And you could use me as a tax break. Honestly, though, like a novel proposal and one which I haven't heard yet. So that could be like an interesting way to navigate the post-apocalyptic landscape that is America. I think maybe that could be a good idea. Beautiful, beautiful. Hmm. All right, here we go. Back. Am I going to make the sim stream? Probably not. That one. Some of them I make into 10 to 20 minute videos. Although I feel like that the last Sims stream, I just... Eh, I don't really feel like it could make for very interesting video development material. I kind of want to just try out a challenge. 
some of them kind of lead to more interesting challenges, but that one I, I think was one I was just content to let sit as it was. All right, we have great the great barbarians of Walnut. Honestly, not really a very intimidating name, but I guess you are who you are. We will take le less wood production for some gold. Uh, we are losing wood production right now, but that's okay, I think. Okay, awesome. And now we actually have... We are going to convert this to a village, so that gives us another worker. And then we get a quarry, so now we get more uh, stone from our... Well, our quarry. Honestly, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We want to keep on expanding our lands, though, to more difficult challenges. So I think... We want to keep our quarry useful because the quarry is quite a quite an amazing structure. Uh, farmland. Do we have any farmlands yet? We don't actually have any farmlands, so I think I will convert this one into a farmland. By fighting the barbarians there. Um, in... Let's put this toward archers, I think. We will just double up on this next power so that we get... Yeah, we got five archers already. We will put more people toward converting this to a farmland. And then let's also get... I think another quarry would not be so bad, getting yet even more stone production. Uh, we could use that. And also now we've beaten four barbarians as well as we have a thousand gold. Once we get to about two thousand gold, our population is going to blow up a lot. We do hit another worker in about 300 pop. Uh, and we are growing again at a pretty steady clip. I can repurpose some of this toward markets. Um, and what else? Abode. Mm, yeah, we'll make an abode, I guess. Mm. Taxes. Uh, taxes are never bad in this. They they are quite a help, but I think if we get more of the metal working going... Metal is a resource which we just don't really have. We haven't seen too much of it yet, and it is it is quite useful. Because we can meaningfully create a lot of horsemen. I won't do that right now, though. Eh, actually, maybe I will. Never mind. Alright, so now we're at 1,352 gold, which is quite good. Quite good, honestly. Um... We should be able to get... Now, this is just a regular boost from before, but we should be able to get one hour's worth of wheat boost, which is actually quite helpful in our production. Um, What else is there to say? We are pretty much ready for the next attack. The horseman is going to be kind of overkill. We won't need horsemen for an entire thing. Um, what else have we got? Slight social... Oh, wow. Actually, Stonehenge does create a social crisis chance. I didn't realize that. Huh. I think that's about it. Anyway, I mean, overall, my assessment, like I said at the beginning, uh, and I, I guess now you've probably seen enough that you can kind of develop a bit of an opinion on it. It is very, very much... Like, I'm having fun when I'm playing this game. It is engaging. I would say I could probably get in its current state maybe like 15, 20 hours out of it. Um, which I think for like the price tag of, what was it, like 18? I feel like that that's actually like a little bit high for the amount of content that's out right now. But what do I know? Um, I do have fun with it. And I did have fun with it. So I will add that to the mix. Um, and that one's kind of hard to measure. But yeah, I guess that is to say like when people play... I mean, if it is kind of like a clicker game, I guess people are more expecting like a very low price tag. Um, and I guess the other thing that I haven't really seen is like how much more variation is there in the game? How much, how does it like not repeat that one formula? I think it is a very good formula and I think it is engaging. I, I think it's interesting. Like um, it's fun and gratifying to watch your civilization progress. I'm just going to show one other thing too, I guess. You know what? Let me go ahead and do this after I build these horsemen. Um, so this is my civilization right here. We've been gradually changing to, uh, abodes. But if we just go back randomly and create a bunch of huts, like, I'm not going to do too many of these because then I will set my civilization on fire. But look how the, like, people start to actually build up. Like, they get rid of the abodes and they place more huts instead. So you could be in, like, the modern era, but you could have huts instead, which is actually kind of cool, I think. 
Um, now I will stop doing that because I am actively self-sabotaging. But yeah, I do find that that is, at least in terms of like visuals and interesting stuff going on, that is kind of cool about this game. Um, and I think that is something that is... Whoops, I am creating more houses. I did not mean to do that. Um, something that is actually rather unique about this game. Okay, cool. Uh, so now we have over 3,000 population, and that means we have a new worker. Wow, hooray. Uh, let's go ahead and continue our quests in these foreign lands. Wait a minute, did I... Wait, I have to cancel that quest, right? Yeah, I did that in the wrong area. All right, good. We're fighting the barbarians instead. Um... Yeah, like a very, very fun game. Uh, another thing too, I will add, um, I don't know. I think sometimes I think that people's like pricing expectations are a little bit insane. Uh, like the dev prices game at like, or like for example, like last year, Vampire Survivors. Although I also think it's a very good marketing technique. <laughs> like people are like, ooh, $3, but also did they really make it a thing? And like, come on, it's $2 more. Like who cares? Um, but yeah, I, th I think just overall that is something that, like, price aside, I don't really like to do that uh, cost value. I mean, like, think of Binding of Isaac. Binding of Isaac, I think I bought for, like, $2. <laughs> like, that is a steal. Come on. Um, but yeah, that being said, I think that maybe the one thing that would be interesting to see as this game uh, goes a little further on into early access is, like, how does that formula change from playthrough to playthrough? I think the areas that I will just posit immediately is that different leaders allow different types of autonomy to take place so that is kind of cool to watch um you haven't really seen me change leaders but perhaps i'll get better leaders as we go uh i think the leader system the leader system itself is rather interesting and you could probably get some kind of cool combos through that so i think that that is an area for variation and replayability as you go through uh, but other stuff. You haven't really seen me mess up either. I think the other thing that's kind of tricky is I've actually gotten so good at the combat in it that I... I mean, like, famous last words right here, but I don't think it's going to happen throughout the stream. Uh, I don't mess up anymore. Like, I, I basically figured out the entire game's combat system after about, I don't know, like, two or three hours of playing, so it does just kind of feel like I'm participating in a in a formula now so there is that uh it is still good and it still kept me playing for like four or five hours after that but you know just a couple of thoughts um i think that's about all that i have to say about that though it's not really a very interesting opinion um but yeah those are some thoughts i don't know do you guys feel like that's a fair assessment or am i going too easy or am i going too hard on it i mean it is very fun and the other thing I'll say is that it is... Ooh, here come the barbarians again. Yeah, I mean, like, moments like that where it's just... Yeah, like the... Ah. Uh, see, but I got... It was too easy for me because I know that in combat, all I'm supposed to do is just click down the military unit damage plus 200% button, make sure I always have that stuff saved up, and then as soon as an enemy attacks, just hit my archers uh, or the knights if it's a greater threat. Like, I will show you one of the last battle. Actually, the last battle in the age does kind of require a little bit more strategy and planning, so... We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Battle Brothers got into Battle Brothers after watching the stream. Hey, cool! Actually, I'm glad that you guys find a bunch of... I hope you guys find something to play from these. That's kind of the... That's the whole point of the VODs. Is to just play random stuff that looks cool. So that's good. Whoa. It certainly hit the aesthetic nicely. Oh, I don't want them to take our gold. Hang on a second. Prevent that. See, like, they just, they get our stuff so quickly. Yeah, I'll show you once we finish this age. Then we'll get to a real fight that's actually rather difficult. Uh, the final fight of an age... Uh, is indeed difficult. Like, I struggled with getting past the classical era. Um, and it won't really be easy this time either. So let's go ahead. Now we've unlocked enough that I, I think I can confidently say we could take a grain trade route. So now we can have all of our main structures uh, being used. Like our quarry, our lumber mill. 
Uh, we will unlock a couple more here. There's like a library and I think like a theater. Maybe one other. Yeah. Uh, and once we get that, then we should be able to... Well, research faster. There's a couple of other things, too, that will happen. But at least now we can grow our civilization with a decent amount of free space. Let's go ahead and get this library down, though. Library is quite nice to have around. Because now we have research of phalanx. We're going to up our windmill, uh, which should raise our food production a little bit more, too, I believe. Uh, I'm allowing some vagrants into our civilization, but I don't think that'll be enough to, like, overthrow it. Cool. All right. Mm, cell stone. Okay, so now we just stay in cell stone. We'll uh, raise the building's cooldown timers. Uh, and now we do kind of reach a phase where I think... Uh, how much time do we have left in this era? So we have like seven more technologies left for this era. So I would say that we probably have enough time to finish off these two quest areas. And then after that, we will face the, um, oh, what is the thing? I believe that after that, uh, we have, like, are they using the recycling symbol for their banner? Can you imagine that? Like, eco armies. Drive a Tesla. How dare you burn gas? <laughs> uh, new world order. Cool. Okay, so I've uh, sped up a little bit of our upgrading. Uh, no, I, what do we have? Neolithic Revolution. Revolt. I believe it. Uh, then what do we have after the next one? Oh, then we have the Black Plague, I believe. And then I haven't gotten to... I do believe that there is one other event after that. I don't really know. We might get... Like a Great Revolution at the end of the Industrial Era or... Who knows what we'll get at the end of it. Um, 458 gold, but now we've got 30 grain per second from our upgrade bonus. Good, we're getting through this fast. Uh, let's get a blacksmith, just because a blacksmith is super useful. Uh, that allows us to get metal. And once we get metal, then we can create tons of horsemen, and that really buffs our military. Um, 20 quests there believe that's about it for now. Okay, now it's actually rather smooth sailing here. We've got cottages. Cottages is slightly useful. Slight tear up. Yeah, when I was learning this game, I'm trying to think of what else I did. It does get a little bit repetitive. I, I made sure to get through like two or three ascensions before I, excuse me, before I started showing this on Twitch. Because I was like, eh, it'll be kind of repetitive if we just have to keep repeating the same eras over and over again uh, on one ascension. So I tried to make sure that I got at least like a little bit of progress through the game and kind of got much of the strategy. Ironically, I got a little too good at the game before then. All right, we're about to fight another battle. Uh, fierce Barbarians. Yeah, but, like, again, the fact that I know to just use my military bonus, like, it's kind of a game breaker. Ooh, do you remember Game Breakers from NFL Street? Oh, I was the best at that game. But only when I could do silly things like run on the walls. Which made friends want to play me in Madden. And I'm not as good at Madden because I'm, I'm better at, you know, like, street ball. Um... Sorry, brief aside there. Uh, so many memories of NFL Street in my room. I played games like this as a kid. Is this how far games have come? I don't know, I kind of like it. Well, I mean, I guess on the other hand, too, this used to be like... This type of thing used to be a flagship kind of game, you know? And now it's just sort of like, this is a game to play in an afternoon. Okay, the bloodthirsty uh, Celts. All right, I think I'm just going to use the military bonus again and slay them all. Don't I have, like... Now, keep in mind, generally speaking, you will probably not have as an easy time with this. 
Uh, I will start to run into more difficulty when I start to hit my own level, but I've also accumulated rulers that are very high level in the game. So, like, you know. But I, I'm also not really thinking through it too hard either. <laughs> uh, so there is that. I, I feel like it could use a little bit of a difficulty raise in that department. Um, yeah. I, I, I believe that is that is fair. But that's just me. Uh, let's see. Getting more abodes. Getting more gold so that we can start to save up. Now we want to be able to sustain the food. So in like, you know, 55 more minutes we want to be able to pull the same bonus therein. So that would be a, something worth saving up for. Uh, have I played FTL? Uh, I love FTL. Yeah. Yeah, this actually this kind of has a little bit of an FTL, like through the ages kind of vibe about it. Um, we, now the question is this, do we, I guess we finish off these two quest areas to take out the barbarian tribes over here. There go our armies right now on quests. We do have a social crisis on our hands. This is unexpected. I will just take it out immediately by boosting the military again. Uh, but now we might not be able to rely on that military boost for all of our next fights. Because I think we're going to have to fight two. Probably, most probably here. <coughs> Excuse me. Here to listen to AA's voice and ramblings about life. What kind of story would we like to hear about today? Maybe the Great War I'll tell you about. I wasn't part of it, because I wasn't born yet. In the war. I don't know what, Grandpa, which war? In the war. In the war. Oh, what else are we, okay, amphitheater. Amphitheater. Why did they make it so difficult to say this word? Here we go. We can just double up. Okay, so the energy button doubles up. Uh, I should probably explain the powers a little bit more. Food bo uh, adds food. Uh, it adds to our population. This one adds 200% to the military unit damage. What does this one actually do? 2520 food. Okay, so it actually does give a specific amount of food. This one doubles the next ability. That one's quite useful to know. Uh, this lowers the cooldown of the other workshops. It's kind of useful for just getting everything going. Um, what is this one? Metal gives you metal, obviously, like a sudden burst of metal, which is useful for our horsemen. Uh, stone, wood, just give more stone and wood. And then the one that's kind of tricky is the wealth, which converts the next ability to gold, so I usually just use it on the food. Because, like, we can't keep growing our population that fast, so I think that is... Okay, we have the Great Barbarian attack. Okay, this one I'm actually going to block some of it because they, this is a rather large attack, which will require... Oh no, actually, it didn't really require that much thinking at all. Never mind. So we can go ahead and convert this to farmland. So that's going to give us more food from our, uh, what is that, our windmill. And I think I will just let the last one finish, and then we will finish with the war. I remember the war. The war. Am I ever going to give the Dave the Diver? Probably not. Dave the Diver was good, but I, I can't really see myself getting all the way through the game. I feel like I could start it. Like, I had a good time starting Dave the Diver, and then I'm going to sort of awkwardly trail off into the distance. Oops. I accidentally let them destroy the... Ooh, that wasn't too good. I was just trying to save some money. And I accidentally let them destroy part of our civilization. Oh god, I've let too much time go by. Okay, now we need to use our... See, that was why you do not want to mess around with combat. Like, I let it go for two seconds and they killed everyone. So that it's too bad. I was trying to demonstrate my point. But you see what I mean? Like, it's, it's a little bit too predictable at that point, some of the combat. Um... I mean, of course, I can just use more metal here. I'm about to research the final technology, which is going to be quite a big battle. Uh, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time now just saving up. 
So we've got a good boost going on here. I can lower the cooldown in the workshops. Raise my abodes. Uh, and now it would be good to just repair this fort. Okay, then I'm actually going to want the fort repaired for the next battle. It is quite a large one. Um, stone walls. We can also just finish these off. Let's go ahead and spend more stone. And as soon as this military ability recharges, I think then we'll call on the next uh, major era changing event. Uh, because there's quite a lot to be done. Ooh, we have enough for another green uh, import. Cool. Okay, so what was that? Uh, 59 minutes, 50 minutes. Okay, so I would say probably like two to three of these things per hour. I would probably feel comfortable sustaining. Probably not that much more than that. Yeah, I was, I was, I was trying to save some money. I didn't want them to just... It is, maybe it is the American way. Well, at least I'm culturally a, you know. At least we saved some money. Never mind your lives. Uh, it's, I mean, that is about the way it is. The American way. Sorry, as an American, I'm just tired of people, like, saying things about our country and then acting like that we all agreed with them. <laughs> oh my god. No, we hate our country more than you do a lot of the t Actually, that used to be a theme. I don't... Actually, there are a lot of things I really like about the U.S. too. Uh, mainly that we're separated from Europe by a large body of water. Um, that might be one of the biggest ones, and that is a rather good reason. Although I just, sorry, reading YouTube comments puts me in, t in touch with too many, too many comments of people like, ha, ah, Americans are dumb. Maybe we are, but at least we're, at least we're far away. <laughs> uh... I don't want to get into I don't want to get into all of the cultural baggage. <laughs> just just know that Americans didn't get to decide on everything about why our country is the way it is, the same way you didn't with yours. <laughs> oh, it's horrible living here. <laughs> uh, can I get all my fellow Florida men in the chat? Although I did consciously decide to live in Florida. Um, although I do like, I do like the part of Florida I'm in. I'm going to make a, just a whole gator version of this game. I, I don't want to be in Canada right now. I'm sorry if you're Canadian. Okay, so we have, okay. Oh, actually we made it through that fine. So they were going to kill all of us, thousands, um... But I had to basically exhaust my entire military. I used up the horsemen, and the horsemen are, like, actually a rather strong unit, so I lost that. I will go ahead and double up on the metal. All right, so now we've finished off with the classical era, and we've unlocked the medieval era. So we are in... Hooray! Woo! Welcome to the medieval era, everyone! Woo! Woo! Um, but yeah, that's how it is. Do I think they say, oh. Oh God, no, I'll go off on my tangent about New York and Florida after this. New York, honestly, New York, the reason I left New York was it was just too, it was too damn expensive. I can't stay in New York. It's like, it's ridiculous, man. Like you can't do anything if you live in New York. Like uh, you can't, you can't leave. You aren't allowed out. That's, that was what I found tricky about there. Yeah, no. I mean, the one thing, though, is that if you want to get somewhere else, like, uh, you know, like, for example, like a Florida or like a Texas, you kind of need, you need enough gas to, like, get out of wherever it was you moved from because there is no public transport here, uh, sadly. There is none. There is none. You will be driving uh, wherever you go. Yeah, back where I moved from, like, in, like... I just lived in like a normal, I don't really want to dox myself, but yeah, I am from like a normal part of New York. And even in like the normal parts, like if you want to get yourself a little house, it is like a million dollars for like just kind of a starter. Yeah, like not, not really even an exaggeration there. Like it is, 
it is kind of insane. Um, yeah, that's the way it is. But yeah, now I live on uh, the moon. Now I live on the moon and I'm far away. I'm far away from you, all of you. No, I don't, I don't like to think that. Actually, I do kind of like the idea of moving back to a city sometime. There are a lot of things you miss about the city, but not anytime soon. Not anytime soon. Ah. Anyway, um, I haven't really had a big civilization downfall yet. Have I, have I lost any of the battles? Now, if you do lose a battle, uh, I will say the thing that goes crazy in this game, and I've made conscious efforts to avoid it, but if you have two or three crises follow each other in this game, like, it's crazy. Your entire civilization just enters this massive downward spiral. However, that being said, everyone dies, like the end. Okay, we have a radical social crisis right now. Who knows, maybe because I'm streaming it, I'll be ignorant and mess something up. Um, okay, I guess I have to use another one. Uh, but yeah, if you have like two crises follow each other, one or two of which you're not prepared for, you will die immediately and it will be, it will be crazy, it'll be awesome. Uh, it'll be a good time. You'll have a good time with it. But, uh, I don't really think I need the amphitheater. What does that give me? 75% hero, 25% corruption. I don't really get what this is doing. It says 75% hero, but... Oh, we could raise more, uh, resources if we allow a slight chance of an uprising. I think I'm willing to do that. I, I would raise more resources at the chan at the slight chance of an uprising. Doesn't that sound kind of exciting? I think that's a good time. Like there might there might be kind of a risk, you know, involved. Oh, whoops, we don't need that many homesteads. Hang on a second. Now everything will catch fire. Nope, not right now. Never mind. Hang on a second. Um, uh, there we go. Very cool. Very cool. We've reached 5,000 people in our civilization. Uh, collect, collect, collect. So I could go back. I just kind of want to wait until my levels are much higher. Michelle Colden, though, I feel like could be better. Could be a better one. 82% per sec. No, actually, Michelle Colden is a little bit better than this one. Add to base damage plus two. On attack, stuns crisis. No, you know, I, I feel like that the grain is going to be more useful just in general here. Ah, whatever, fine. I'll, I'll leave that as is. Hey... El Poco Biadlo. Thank you very much for the very kind words. Hope you're having a good night. Okay, we have another social crisis. Maybe because I've just allowed it to happen. I think, wouldn't it be kind of funny if our entire civilization were just destroyed? Um, well, maybe. What have we got left here? Hang on a second. We have colonizations, we have colonial era, then civil rights, and then we go into... Uh, steam engine. Ooh, and then we actually get to go through the whole next era after that. And then, obviously, there is an ascension at the end. Ascend. And that is rather exciting, isn't it? We haven't really used our metal for anything yet. So now we get to the point where I like to think of this as kind of like a plentiful phase where we just have so many resources. I'm going to go ahead and use the automation now because we have 3,260 autonomy. Which is kind of a crazy amount of autonomy to have. Oh, these mammoth... Man, woolly mammoths are attacking. Now we're getting to medieval times. Let's take a risk. Let's just have another war for no particular reason. The Ottomans are invading. All right, cool. But we made lots of money off of that war. Okay, that one... Sorry, that one was kind of an American thing to say. I, I admit that one. Uh, but now we have three instances of grain boosts. 
I know, I'm sorry, I deserve it, I'm horrible, I'm a bad person. It was just the military-industrial complex using me as a vessel in order to speak through. Um, sometimes that happens. As an American, just, you know, like, I will have to talk at length about um, firearms and, you know, other kinds of stuff like that, and it makes me feel good. Um, of course I'm kidding, of course I'm kidding. I just, I just find you, I find your people, honestly, the internet is a rather funny place for that. <laughs> uh, in particular, Twitch, people just have a very good sense of humor, uh, when it comes to, like, bizarre national pride. <laughs> uh, oh, why do you think I create all of the challenges on here, on this website? Oh god, we have 683 free space. That's far too much. I think we could do with more phalanxes. Hang on a second. I need to start using up more of these powers. So as you can see, hopefully, as you go through the game, more and more of your powers become... Like, you kind of become a little bit more fluent with these things because you spend less time clicking and more time managing how to use all of your powers. And I, I do think that that is the essence of a good civilization game, though. Yeah, or... I, eh, maybe not simply just an essence of good controls is that you're spending less time in the weeds here remember when the game was just these two buttons now it's develop, uh, developed to encompass a plethora of different approaches and strategies here on the AA support group hour of uh, gaming or something whatever we're doing on here Yeah, I don't know does that make it sound like I have an interesting opinion Hopefully it does. Um, I think that's about it. The color palette here is also very cool. I haven't even brought that up. Uh, again, this is a game that I wouldn't... I don't know. One I sort year, of think of this I've as just sort of like, like an aesthetic strings, experience. A year's salary well spent, smiley anyway. face. I don't make much money, sad face. Don? Who is Don? Schwez, also, thank you very much for the sub. Please don't put yourself at any financial need for my sake. I hope you're just enjoying the videos. Uh, but thank you very much for the sub, too. I just hope you're enjoying it. Yeah. Times are tough. Times are tough, man. People are moving to Florida now. Yeah, the one thing I do miss about the city is just sort of like the bottomless grab bag of people that you meet. Uh, meat. I'm hungry. I ate so much meat yesterday. It was I, like I had a craving, man. I did, I had a craving. Mm. Also, Pepper Flake, thank you very much for the sub. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, gift in the sub to Tiger Jr. 1305. Thank you very much, Pepper Flake. Appreciate you. Thanks for everything you do for me, Pepper Flake. Meat. Okay, the, I, the meats were cold cuts, ham. Although I was in search of turkey, I couldn't locate any um, at the store. Uh, and then also there was fried chicken, which was honestly a delight. So those were good. Yeah, you know, the one thing that I, I've started to avoid now, actually a lot of folks in chat like discussing it, uh, you know, I think uh, it's partly just because I got really into clicker games recently, <laughs> like why I got really into this, but it's sort of one of those things where it's kind of like junk food and I'm like, eh, I just like it, it's kind of fun, I don't really feel like overanalyzing my enjoyment of the game too much. Although I could see why, like, I don't know, if you're in if you're in search of, like, the Mona Lisa of games, I don't really feel like... The one thing that I will say that is actually really interesting about this game in terms of, like, the programming is how did he create such, like, a dynamic environment that is being set up and dismantled over here as time goes on? Like, it is kind of cool to watch your civilization progress. And I think just as someone purely interested in, like, game programming like how is that happening Ooh, it's kind of cool um i'm sure it's like a rather simple set of rules but it, it is kind of cool to watch that happen i do think the whole ui and everything like that is very satisfying as well so 
go ahead and collect all of these. And yeah, this is getting actually rather... I'm just going to go ahead and dismantle all of these. Um, or maybe like just the common one. Whoops, that one wasn't common. I think we can use these in other things. Generally speaking, the other thing that I've noticed is it's not just a matter of combining these. It's also a matter of... Um, just purely unlocking better ones as time goes on. Like, that's how I got these unique ones, like Cleopatra and stuff. Um, let's see what else, what else could we do? So we're going, we're making our way, what are we, about halfway through the medieval era. We've got on the speed boost from research. We've got on just about everything else that we need. Yeah, I think that this is about the time where I could just say... Unless if you're constantly changing out your leader, I do feel like it gets to be a bit repetitive here. And it would be interesting if there were like more interactive quests or something like that. Because we pretty much are just repeating what we've done up till this point. Ooh, the Great Uprising. Hang on a second, let me just block myself for a second because I have a little bit more time to decide. Cool. Okay, that's fine. Crossbowman. Oops, I need another homestead or an abode perhaps. Let's get a rampart out here. Uh, we could use up some stone on this. Although things start to cost a lot more money. So what do we have, 90 per second? Eh, you know, actually, we might be able to do... I think we could do one other whole grain trade route to grow our civilization just a bit more because right now we're trying to push up toward 10,000. Uh, and I think we could get there just a little bit faster without risking it all. We don't want to have, like, a big, massive civilization downward spiral. And remember, when you ascend in the game, uh, the entire thing resets. The only things that don't reset are your rulers. Um, yeah, like the things up here. And also, you do get some other ascension points that you get to spend on, like, you know, one or two wood in your next playthrough or something simple like that. So you can slightly make each playthrough run just a little bit easier from run to run. But are my citizens happy? Did I, I'm trying to think if there is actually a happiness mechanic. There is... I mean, they don't... They look engaged. They don't really look particularly happy. Like they're, you know, gallivanting and engaging in tomfoolery and whatnot. Um, but no, I mean, they do appear to be engaged. As far as, like, actual risk of an uprising, uh, there is a 20% chance of uprising. So, yeah, they're probably not all that happy. To be fair, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. That's about it. Mm, mm. Here we go. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's about... It's about... That's about as far as we can get right here. Yeah, we are pretty much just grinding it out for a little while. Um, what do we have? We have a couple of other technologies to get. Goldsmithing, library, education, better wheel, barracks. Uh, other than that, going up in the gold stores is a help. I'm just trying to think if there's... Is there anything else we could... We could raise the amount of autonomy we're getting. Autonomy does become somewhat useful. Or somewhat more useful later on. Or, like, for certain rulers, if we unlock them. If we don't, then it's just kind of useless for much of it. Hmm. As long as they have enough wood and meat. They should... <laughs> wood and meat. Uh, we need more wood and meat. <laughs> Let's go raise our library to, uh, get faster research speed. We are taking up colonization... Which should go hunky-dory if if everything works out. We have 13,000 population now. Uh, we've pretty much just been raising, like, gold money now. Here we go. Boost detail. Yeah, we've got plenty, plenty of uh, grain flowing in from without. We will continue researching this theater. Although, if we get more than we're capable of handing, we also have backups of extra steel, or what is it, metal uh, and wood in order to spend on more crossbowmen and knights if, if that situation comes to pass. Uh, if that also goes south, we can always ship in more with all the gold, which is why I've been trying to accumulate so much of that. 
uh, as we go. I can also just speed up our research a little bit. All right, so right now we've got the Great Plague. So this is the medieval version. I'm gonna go ahead and just block off like these first several events. But as you can see, even our best combat ability takes it down only to there. Um, I'm just gonna double up on the next ability and use that for two crossbowman attacks. Okay, yeah, and like I said, uh, this honestly still is not enough. So we're gonna go ahead and use up our entire military strength. Okay, so this is kind of cool. So this is a rather difficult fight that we are going through right here. Uh, I will use up two metal bursts in order to get that. Let me just go ahead and get a little bit more from our economy there. Uh, and then, can we actually visibly see the Great Plague coming in? No, probably because I've blocked it because I didn't want to just kill everyone. Kill 14,000 people over three minutes. So obviously this would kill all of us very quickly, but I'm just letting it go through for a second. Um, I guess we could go through with this. Eh, I could import. I don't really think I need to right here, though. I could probably just get a couple more crossbowmen to finish off this event for me. Whoops. There we go. So we're done. Right, I mean, I've gotten better at handling the military here, but let's go in for civil rights. So now we've made it beyond... I guess that was the medieval era. Um, and now we're coming into, like, the early renaissance, I believe. Um, I mean, hang on a second. Where where are we in terms of technology? Enlightenment... Oh, no, no, no! Maybe this is, like, well, gunpowder, land reform. Okay, so we are actually a little bit further than I thought. Uh, then we enter the industrial era after this. We get banking, medicine, like, so kind of basic modern technologies. Then we get railroads, trenches, circular stuff. Ooh, there's actually quite a lot after this. Uh, I don't think we'll get into the modern era because I believe that comes after, but we'll get to, like, late enlightenment. Um, or something like that. Oh god, wait a minute, I did not anticipate this. Uh, we have an uprising on our hands, probably just due to the normal event that keeps happening. Uh, that is not so good. Hang on a second. Let me just turn off that leader rule because I was not ready for that. We are being a little bit too productive right now. We need to just kind of tone it down a bit. Uh, all right, I will use that. Okay, cool. We have a couple of knights. I just like to always have backup military because if you don't, and like something goes awry, you are in huge trouble in this game. Like you will lose your entire civilization in an instant. It is not very funny. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Enjoy pest. Mm. Mm. Oh, actually, is that the what is the what is the prequel technology? Pesticides. Oh, I thought you said yeah, antibiotics. And conscription are required for women's suffrage. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, rationally in order. Of course. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, yeah. Cavalry. I guess we go in with cavalry. Mm, cool. We could get more ramparts too. Why don't we just get some of those very quickly? Crossbowmen. Whoops. Um... All right, good by me. Uh, what do we have in terms of boosts remaining? Uh, we could import more grain. That's really one of the only long-term effects, though. The other ones last for only, like, five minutes. I think I will do one more grain trade route and then have that be it. Because the first one that we used ends in 22 minutes. So that means a total of, like, 38 or so. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So now the whole, like, area has changed. We've got, a like, a well-paved bridge down here. What else? I think I just want to build up the rest of the military here, because we're still on missions. What else is going on in our civilization? Uh, we don't have autonomy. I could use a little bit of autonomy right there, actually. That is fine. Have we unlocked anything interesting in rulers? Eh, a lot of these are just adding to like military buffs. For the most part, I, I would prefer like economic buffs, you know, just so that we can get a strong economy so that we're ready for the fights when they come. Um, cool. 
Uh, population's at 15,130. If we get it to 31,623, which I believe is about as far as I've gotten so far in the game, um, then we get yet another worker. Although it kind of becomes useless. Like We'd be better off just going on more quests at this point. I do believe that there is basically no skill cap that you can get to in this. Like You could just kind of keep on building up your civilization like forever expanding without in the missions so if you do hit i don't know like headwinds you could always just stay back and do that uh no residents we got to be kind of careful with the residences now like we don't want to have too many otherwise they'll go on fire uh, i think this is also a breakthrough technology yeah we got 41 percent chance of uh social what is it social crisis Still, Stonehenge appears to be affecting us, oddly enough. Do we actually have Stonehenge on screen anywhere? Unfortunately, well, it's only here. I do believe that there are other, like, wonders that you could build. Yeah, kind of like a Futurama speed run through civilization, but a tad slower. That's a pretty good way to describe it. I mean, at this point, I, I think you've gotten a pretty good, complete picture of the game. I think of this game as the ideal game I would want on a laptop if I have to spend a long, long time in an airport or something like that. It's an extremely good time waster. And I know that's not like the most flattering thing to say. Um, I think it's really good at that though. Uh, and there's a lot of games that I just think have very good static UIs like this. Um, that I do on this channel, that I just kind of group into that. I, I hope that's not like too unloving, because I do like it. Um, I just, I really enjoy having an activity to do while I travel, you know? Um, that is the type of thing. Makes me want to book a plane ticket to go somewhere, just to kind of get in the gaming on a laptop while I'm in an airport. Okay, hang on a second, we've got mammoths coming in. Man, it really took five of those in order to take out that mammoth raid? Wow. Again, I don't want to let them in, because if I let them in for like two seconds, they'll basically just wipe out the entire civilization. Hmm, okay. Um, hmm, how are we doing in the other fronts? Eh, I'll start the quest, because after this we get more wood and something else back. No, we do want that. We still have the, um, knight's charge. Is that even knights anymore? Yeah, it's still knights. Knights and musket men. How is it musket? The one thing that I'll also say that's a little bit tricky about this is... I know they're supposed to be doing more da- I guess the raids are getting stronger. I, I just think that they need a different... Like, I get it that it's funny that it's kind of meme that it's a woolly mammoth. But I, I just feel like... What, it's like a bigger mammoth at this point? It would be kind of interesting to see threats get, like, outpaced in terms of their civilization era, you know? Like, now you have to fight against, uh, I don't know, like, uh, uh, global warming. Oh, God, it's global warming personified, uh, or something like that. I, I don't know, I'm just thinking of bad examples. A giant truck or a plane or something other than a woolly mammoth, I don't know. Uh, just seems rather odd that we're still fighting woolly mammoths in, like, the industrial era. Oh, I, I guess you don't really have that many, like, neutral wild enemies in a game like Civilization when you get to, like, the modern era, though. Yeah, I don't know, give me a better example. Yeah, like a, like a native tribe or something like that, you know. Um, or, like, I don't know, insert your enemy that you would fight in Civilization here. Something like that. Hang on a second, I gotta build another residence. Okay, cool, I have 1059. Um, cool. Oh, what? 1046, I stand corrected. Yeah, like uh, a flying saucer. France, uh, France, another good example, of course. <laughs> Fight. <laughs> yeah, like shoot the flying, uh, no, let's see, flying saucer would be a pretty good enemy. 
which we still have to go up against. I think if we want to get much faster, we get more uh, grains per hand in the fields. And then also, too, we want to speed up our research speed because basically everything is... We could also take a research grant just to speed up our research a little bit more if we want to progress through the game faster. Uh, because at this point, like, very little is limiting us. Um... Yeah, it's really just a matter of managing our reef, like our cooldown rate and stuff like that. Cool. Okay, and then mostly uh, we just wind back up selling stone throughout most of the eras here. Uh, I think we can raise our production again. Oh, right when I said that, we would get an uprising, like immediately after. Crisis has ended. Cool. Um. Maybe don't raise our production that much. Maybe it's just not worth it. Uh, okay, after that we go in for another library. Uh, we didn't unlock anything there. Whoops, okay. Yeah, like mercenaries or crusaders. Something like that. Hmm. So what else do we have left in this area? We've got cavalry, we've got a good number of these. I'm trying, see, the, I guess the other thing is it would be interesting if the buildings continued evolving in some way because it's sort of like, oh, here's an upgrade for your quarry, here's an upgrade for your lumber mill. And I'm trying to see if there's any other technologies that are like really, really meaningfully different in terms of gameplay change from this point forward. Like, what do we have? Slightly stronger military unit, slightly better granary so that it can hold more units. More clicking, more clicking, slightly better barracks so that it can hold another uh, defensive bit. Slightly better windmill, slightly better library, slightly better clicking. Slightly better mark. Okay, maybe the marketplace is the only interesting one. Slightly better sustainment. Uh, what does that really have to do with... I guess it does have something to do with banking. But yeah, for the most part, most of these technologies, maybe except for the marketplace upgrade, which even still we're already getting that, it's just kind of more of stuff that we already have. See what I mean? Like, gameplay doesn't really change that much. If I am to go further into the game... Yeah, again, just upgrades, slightly better units, slightly better unit. There really aren't that many things here that add totally new systems. Yeah, I don't think a single one of those adds a totally new system to the game. Uh, I mean, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. And the other thing, too, is that, like, as you go through the ascensions, you do start to unlock things that you didn't have in earlier playthroughs. Like, for example, Stonehenge I didn't have when I first played. I unlocked that with a later ascension. So it does make the game more challenging as you go through each era. Um, but yeah, that could be interesting because it does feel a little bit, like, repetitive in that way. Um, I think I'm going to fend off a couple more crises, but... Oh, uh, wait a second. Here, I'm going to reject that. But I think for right now, I'm going to just grind this one out with chat here, and then if we find any interesting situations, I will return. Uh, but otherwise, I, I think let's just continue expanding our land. Um, and then I'll meet at, back up at the end of this era when we have, like, interesting stuff on screen again. Uh, I stand corrected now. Uh, everything was going, like, really easy until now. And then we did just hit a social crisis because, uh, reasons. Oh, and I also, ah, oh, darn, I forgot to use my powers, too. Like, I was totally, I was kind of messing up there. So I did lose a lot of people there, as you can see. I'm going to just try to fill up some of these houses right now, but we are in danger of running into, like, a basically a social downfall spiral loop. Let's go ahead and just take things off of our, um, off of our other areas. We'll go ahead and just put a lot of resources into building up our military super fast. We're going to get more food because now we need to fill up the houses. Uh, this is actually not good. We are in like a civilization downward spiral right here. I'm also going to trade just so that we can get... Um, uh, I'm going to need a, lum a bunch of lumber shipments right now just so that we can very, very quickly rebuild our entire musket force. Super fast. Okay, yeah, as you can see, now we are getting a fire because there's just too many. We, so we need to take out the fire with riflemen. Whoops, I did not do that in the right order either. 
and we are about to lose more of our houses. But it's going to destroy the free space in the houses. Whoops, I didn't mean to build... Ah, no. Okay, now everything is on a downward spiral. Yeah, we are just kind of screwed right now because, like, society has... Ah, uh, we just lost, like, 20,000 people. Oh my gosh, wow. Uh, now we have tons of people who are just homeless, which is causing another massive downward spiral. Uh, why don't we just get some cottages for these people as they come back in? Okay, we have horrible, like, vagabonds living everywhere. 194% uh, vagabond chance, so this is quite horrible. I would be surprised if our civilization doesn't, doesn't just go straight into downward spiral here. Um, although the game wants me to build bastions, I don't know why. That's a pretty horrible decision right here. Um... We will probably lose our civilization again, but yeah, we just lost around 25,000 people. Uh, but what we go into after that is basically massive reproduction through food. Uh, here we go. Actually, I need to continue doing that for some time. Actually, we have far more um, wood here, so let me just build homesteads instead. Oh, this is horrible. Oh no, and now we have a plague. Um, this is great. Okay, great, so we have ended that. And now that goes into another social crisis. So as you can see, this is obviously going so amazingly. I'm gonna go ahead and just put tons of money into more lumber shipments so that we can build musket men really, really fast to just put down the plague. Uh, super fast again, but it still might not be enough. Um, but now we have wound ourselves up into a horrible death spiral, which does happen in this game. Uh, we got stunned, or they got stunned. Something happened there. Uh, here we go. I don't think we're going to be able to put this one down. I think this is just going to kill our... Yeah, this is going to kill 7,800 people. So here goes our civilization. Uh, somehow it didn't kill 7,800 people, though. Uh, gosh. Uh, we need, like, one more musket man. Okay, now that crisis has ended, but then it ended in yet another plague, because while that was happening, all of the vagrants died out. Uh, and so, as you can see, like, the game basically just catapults into, like, a horrible death spiral. In which case, you get your civilization has fallen, and now you need to, like, rebuild. So you do stay in your current era that you were in. Um... You have no risks occurring for a while, but basically, if you outgrow how much you should have, then you will go into one of those horrible death loops. So, I mean, personally, I feel like that it's too easy. Like, and now, as you can see, now we have 700 food growth, which is insane. Um, like, we don't want to continue allowing that to happen, but... Yeah, basically, if you don't play perfectly, you will wind up in a death spiral which is like mildly frustrating because you know you want more challenge at the high end and you want it to be like slightly more forgiving when you don't play perfectly but uh, it's kind of where the game's difficulty is at right now and that is more or less my although it was funny i thought we were like basically coasting i'm going to just have to basically rebuild everything right now which I mean, I'm already, like, halfway there, as you can probably already see. It's not that hard to rebuild everything. And it's actually kind of cool. Um, but as we go, we are starting to get vagrants, too, as you can probably see. Um, and do we have our outer map bonuses? We do actually have our other map bonuses still, too, so that is quite good. We just want to make sure that we're keeping up with the vagrant population. Otherwise, we're going to have another plague death spiral as we go. Um... Hang on a second. I'm just going to slightly curb the population growth here so that, like, we don't get totally overwhelmed again. But, yeah, um, I guess I'll get to where this is stable again, and then we'll go from there. Okay, cool. We actually had a death spiral downward. I, I am happy that we did, because otherwise the game can be honestly, like, a bit boring uh, if we don't have a death spiral.
All right, we've finally crested uh, 31,063 or whatever the number. Th oh, wait, no. Uh, we have just one more. Uh, I stand corrected. We have to just get a little bit more population. Uh, here we go. Okay. Now we are going to get our next milestone at 100,000. So we've rebalanced our civilization very delicately after it totally fell to zero population. Uh, we went through a couple more crisis technologies, but now I would say we're ready for the steam engine in the industrial era. That's going to take 59 seconds to do. If this should go horribly awry, I'm going to go ahead and do another trade agreement to get, like, metal and wood. And we'll just import a massive number of, um of musket men and knights. It is still knights. Oh no, cavalry now, my bad. Um, before the next era, because it is rather... Okay, so first off, let's just defend ourselves. We have the Great Revolution here. Uh, we need to basically do a massive charge and then let's start getting in more cavalry. But let's give another bonus to metal and another bonus to metal to get more cavalry, and then we will double up on our next military charge. And then a couple more of those, because I don't think we're gonna get any more for a while. Okay, we can't get a bonus there. Four, five. Okay, so that gets us all the way there. Um, we're also stunning the raid. We've completely defended our civilization, uh, but that is our entire military strength that we just used, so that was kind of a lot. Uh, let's get more gold in. And then we can also trade because we just simply didn't have enough stuff to kill the entire invasion. And we still won't have enough, it looks like. Uh, this is very bad. Uh, we could get more musket men. Ambiguous Amphibiax, the shepherd of the greatest civilization. Uh, no, nah, it's not really looking like it anymore, to be honest. But thank you, that is very flattering, Peace Bloom. I appreciate it. Hopefully, we will come out of this one alive. I'm thinking, uh, now I put all the money in toward importing more metal. So now if we spend a little bit more on metal. There we go. Very, very good. Okay, now we are importing the last of the cavalry. Alright, that's almost enough to destroy this threat. Uh, and then I think for the last of it, we just get... Eh, no, you might, we might as well just get one more unit of cavalry instead. So, I mean, okay, yeah, and even as we use our shields, the raid slightly takes... Oh, actually, yeah, the raid does slightly do damage to itself when we do that. Um, I stand corrected. We could probably just let this one run itself out, but I might as well get another cavalry unit here anyway. Oh, yeah, actually, we won't even need to use up these cavalry. Never mind. Uh, we're fine. I stand corrected. I will save these cavalry for later whilst I let the Great Revolution just run itself out. Not so great anymore, are you, Revolution? Hmm. Um. Let's go ahead and just start building up our walls for after the Great Revolution is over. Um, cool. Oh, or actually, you know what? We want to prevent another crisis from happening after this one, so let's go ahead and just create room in the housing. Uh, because right now we just have a ton of, like, vagabonds just kind of, like, living out on the open. Um, oh, we, we accidentally imported all of that metal, though. Okay, I guess all of the metal will just go to waste. Too bad, never mind. We just don't want another crisis to evolve at, uh, after this one. That would be pretty bad. Ideally, we won't have that. Okay, cool. Now we have enough room in our civilization for vagabonds to enter. Um, they'll probably just burn themselves out on this shield or the next one. Um, I guess we could do more bastions instead. We'll just prepare for the next era. I mean, we might as well just start getting ready for the next era, but we are starting to look more like, well, modern now. It's like the... Uh, we're coming into the early days of the Industrial Revolution, as I guess our civilization should look, right? Um, here we go, we'll get more gold. Uh, it's just taking a long time to replenish this sheer number of, like, defenses that we have in our civilization. Oh, we could probably just punch it. Nope. Never mind. All right, they will definitely burn themselves out there, though. Cool. Okay, we have taken down the revolution. Uh, crisis is over. We've successfully finished that one. 
Uh, so now we have, these ones are like very risky technologies. The circular saw, the rifle, labor unions, stock market. Those things are going to lead to potential new wars. So we will start off with tenements. Um, what else have we got going? We probably have enough stuff going on outside of our borders. Like we've been on a lot of missions here. We could do some more. Oh, look, our sprite has actually updated. Cool. I think I'm just going to focus a little bit more on the interior because the last time that this all went down, we just had like a very unstable government that broke down from within. Uh, and we do have a whole new set of leaders that actually have pretty good abilities. This guy gives tons of wood. On attack, stun crisis. Uh, reflect 14 damage. Um. Exploitation. Uh, and welfare, auto construction toggle. Uh, we haven't really been using the auto construction, honestly, so we'll take this guy instead. He looks slightly more productive. But yeah, that's that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, let's get some more musket men in now that we have wood. Um, the only thing that I'll say about this is it feels like that pretty much everything in the next era, I know it's like cool new technologies, but I feel as though a lot of it is just kind of more of what we already had. I do like the fact that the crises get a little bit trickier to navigate throughout the game. Um, but yeah, a lot of it does kind of feel like just more of what we've seen. Um, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think I'm going to make my way through this era. I don't think I'm going to need a lot more outposts on the other side. But yeah, uh, the combat does evolve a bit. Gets slightly more challenging, but just, uh, similar there. Anyway, let's get to the end of this era. Alright, I'm about to open up the door to the next level of civilization. This is probably about as far as we will go. We I just decided to stop on the quests for now. Um... We will ascend now beyond the industrial era. So we're going to get probably something horrible happen after this. I've just been constructing tenements here. We'll probably want to stop making tenements sooner or later. Um, but yeah, like... Eh, uh, actually, we should probably... Yeah, we'll get a bunch of research grants to get through it faster. Good, the research... I don't know why it's just a picture of the Ten Commandments there. But it is. So it is the Great Smog. Uh, not to be confused with a, a large dragon from a Tolkien uh, book. Okay, we have to, like, use up the entirety of our military here. Ooh, this actually worked. Shooting the smog worked. What do you know? Wow, that was surprisingly easy to ascend there. Wow, uh, I did not expect it to be that easy. Never mind. Uh, we've pretty much finished the game. Now I will show you the ascensions. Oh, and Duke of Ook. Jesus, thank you very much for the five gift subs. Appreciate you, man. You don't need to do that for me, but thank you very much. Thank you, man. Ooh, and we also unlocked Cleopatra. Hey, look, there goes Cleopatra. I, I will say our rulers are much better now, but now we can actually see the amazing ascension. I could, like, get my population slightly higher, but I think that that's fine. So you score up your points for your ascension. You get some workshop levels. The army gets the smog. <laughs> yeah, like, shoot the smog. That's always been the solution in this civilization, is just shoot whatever threat, environmental or otherwise seems to be bothering us. So we've made it through classical, medieval, renaissance, and industrial. And now we're up to modern, so I'll go ahead and buy that. And then you get Scenario 1, which unlocks Ascension Tier 2, which is apparently coming soon. Although, I mean, like, every time that you ascend, you can unlock, you know, better tech or, like, slightly more wood generation or whatever it is. Just things to make you, like, slightly more upgraded and powerful. What is this, the... Eiffel Tower. Um, a couple more hero blueprints, too, which could potentially make it more interesting. I do feel like it would be nice if these things cost slightly less, because... Oh, I, don't, I don't know. I feel like uh, I feel like there's more game to get to from there. But, I mean, what, what could be behind this Ascension Tier 2? Uh, I guess awaits to be seen in early access. But, yeah, I think... Um, yeah, what am I going to unlock, actually, for this one? Black lotuses while ascending. What is this, like magic? 
Uh, I guess uh, we'll probably need something else before then. Um, huh. Deaths reduced by 5%. What is that really going to help us with, though? Research generation by 10%. I guess that does make everything just faster in general. Okay, what the heck? I'll buy that. Buy more starting gold and then just, like, more stone in general. Okay, I mean, that's pretty good. And then that gets us started on our next run. But anyway, then you, again, restart from the very beginning. So, yeah, I, I feel like that there's a good amount of game here. I would like to kind of see how the whole loop progresses rather than just kind of repeating. But again, like, I think in terms of casual, there's a lot here and it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, uh, micro-civilization. Check it out.